All right, everybody. We have Elizabeth Nistico from Revenge Wife and Holy Child here today, and I am excited to speak with her because I have been a fan for some time. What's going on? Hey, I'm in LA just drinking coffee. Nice. I am in LA as well, drinking some tea. Oh, nice. Thanks for having me. What part of uh, Los Angeles are you in? I'm in Highland Park. Oh, nice. So am I. I'm, uh, oh, yeah, I'm hanging out uh, right off Figueroa right now. It's... Oh, me too. That's crazy. Maybe wow. we'll go get him, Tiger, after. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, things are starting to open up again. I was just cruising around the, the strip the other day and I was like, wow, kind of feels like uh, things are getting back to normal a little bit. Yeah. So, Elizabeth, tell us, you know, you have a couple new singles. Uh, we're going to talk about Manifest and Earthquake from your new project, Revenge Wife. Um, very cool. And, uh, and, you know, you've done a lot of really cool things with Holy Child. But before you did all that stuff, why don't we just take us back and let us know how you got into music? Yeah, um, I got, well, hmm. <laughs> I like was always one of those people growing up. I grew up in New Hampshire. Um, and so I was always a person who was obsessed with music. Like I am a dancer and I um, started dancing when I was like one and a half and never stopped. Um, and that's such an intimate relationship with, with music. You know, yeah. I remember like songs would come on in my dance class when I was like three and I would just be like so hyped like I would wait the whole dance class for like the song to come on and um yeah so I always had a really special relationship with music and I was listening a ton and um and yeah I was doing things like church choirs I was in like an all-girl group singing and dancing called hearts but um I was kind of like more of a dancer I always considered myself more of a dancer mm -hmm. And, but like then I went to band camp and was singing in band camp and like doing music then. But, um, you know, I worked at a, all, an instrument store. That was my first job mm. selling instruments. And, um, but I think it really happened like when I was a little bit older, like I did the dance program in college. I, I, I was studying dance, but I was also studying um, international affairs particularly development studies mm. and I went to Nepal and I was like really talking to all these NGOs and and finding out like what are they doing in Nepal and how are they like helping develop this place and I left and I, and I got like a job offer there they were like just stay you know you can you can live here and here's the job offer and I felt like I saw my potential life like open up and I knew all these expats and I was like am I gonna live in Nepal like is this gonna happen and I don't know. I just felt really discouraged with the concept of development. Like, I feel like really the way to help people is to empower. And that was when I realized like, I'm going to be an artist. And then, um, and then I got back to the States and I was still had another year left and I started painting and I was like, fuck development studies. Like, I just feel like forcing democracy on people is modern imperialism. And I just don't want to do that. And, um, I, I want to empower like on a local level if I am to do anything like that. So I was painting and I was like, this guy was like, you know, I really, I had a party at my house and I had only canvases around and paintings everywhere. And he was like, I really like your paintings. I'm going to, I would like to manage you. And I'm like, yeah, sure. Whatever. And so then he's getting me in all these galleries. I'm like showing my paintings in all these galleries in New York. Um, and yeah, that, then my I, in my dance class, the musician was like, hey, um, do you want to, I know you paint, do you want to paint this practice space that we have, like with all these instruments? And I was like, okay, yeah. And then while I was painting that, he was jamming. And then I just like got on the mic and he was like, oh, wow, you can like come up with melodies really fast. And I was like, oh, yeah, yes. And then, and then that was my bandmate. We made a band together. And then wow. that, that was my first time writing music. Wow. First time writing music. So I mean, it sounds like you've been a creative and an artist your entire life, whether it was dance or painting or, and you were around music a lot. Um, yeah. You know, you were in band was, although that was the first time that you had kind of created music, it sounds like, uh, did you have a passion for music? Cause it sounds like, you, you know, you were working at a music store and you were hanging out with all these creatives. Was it something that was maybe in the back of your mind that you wanted to do? I like didn't even know that doing music was like a possibility. Right. 
like it was like one of those stories like I I knew like like some of the guys who I worked with at that instrument store um it was called Ted Hebert's and it was like a big deal in my hometown and um because it was where you would go to get anything you would get your trumpet for band you'd get your guitar anything that you wanted they would have it and um yeah, like this one guy I worked with, like opened for the Mighty Mighty Boston's on a tour. And I loved ska. I just loved mm -hmm. music. like I, I listened to so much music. It was a really big part of my life. It was like the major component of like almost most of my relationships revolved around music or I had music in it or any substantial one. I remember I used to like when I was like eight, nine, ten, I would always be like, what kind of music do you like? because I felt like that could be my, that would be my way to connect with someone. And then I turned yeah. 14 and I was like, I can't ask that question anymore. Like people give me disappointing answers. I'm not going <laughs> to do that. And like, uh -huh. I remember having that thought. Yeah. Music was like, I mean, my, my dad was also a musician. I mean, he played accordion and, um, but, and he was like on a path to be, a professional musician, I guess. And he like, he decided like, oh, I can't do that. I have to become a pilot. Um, and yeah, I, I don't know. He was always playing music too. When I was growing up, like while we were eating dinner, he would always be making songs. Well, before he, my parents divorced, but before he left, like there's music everywhere with, with him. Right. Um, so a little bit of your dad in there for sure. Yeah. That's cool. I, yeah, it's funny you mentioned that because I feel like when you, I know at least for me, like in high school, your your music taste becomes very defined and you're very specific about what you like. And uh, and then after that, I started opening back up to, you know, and you're like, am I getting less defined? Or, and it's like, kind of like, no, you're just getting more open-minded again. You know, you're, you're losing kind of those those preconceptions that you have about other music genres again, which is cool because the more you love, the more there is to love. Yeah. I like love all music so much. Me too. Yeah. So tell us about how you went from, oh, I just came up with some quick melodies and now I'm kind of in a music project to, uh, to actually, you know, getting some traction and, uh, and having people listen to your stuff. So, yeah, it's so crazy to talk about like that period because it's also like looking back at it, at it like everything that happened was so momentous and changed my life, but then and it's like, man, do things not change my life anymore? Like, what is happening now? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so I was, I was, so Louis, my bandmate, or, you know, he's my, he, he was my partner who I was writing music with. And um, he was like, okay, so he, he had taken a year off to tour with his high school band that had just broken up. And then he or that then broke up. And so he still had a year to go. So I started writing music right when I graduated. So we wrote like a bunch more songs, but then I was like, I'm moving to New York because we were in DC and he was going to stay in DC and he knew he wanted to move to LA. So he was like, I'm going to make my thesis project, like me recording an EP so that when I get to LA, I can like have this thing that I made and like, hand it to people and then I can like work as a musician. He's like full-time musician all his life, always, always gonna be doing music. He always knew it, you know, that type of person. So, yeah. so, so when I met him, he's basically trying to write songs for this like th thesis project of his that's gonna act as this greater thing, but he's basically like getting the school to like fund him to go to the studio. That's genius. Was it, so was he, a, was he like a composition major or something like that? He was like a, no, he also was international affairs, but his like, I think, I think we all like did it. I mean, I think he did it like, but toward the end he was like, oh yeah, music is my thing. And he kind of had the same realization. Um, so yeah, we were going to say something. Yeah, I was just saying, so he was international affairs in college. Did he change his major to music in order to do music think, as his thesis? No, I think he had minored in it though. Okay, okay, got it. He was able to like do this project. Still. Got it. Yeah. Right. So, so he has, so he has the school on his side. So anyway, he's like, all of the songs we're writing are like gonna be his his project, and that's right. 
that's the concept of it. And I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, I love writing songs. This is cool. Like melodies are so fun. And I was having a lot of fun with it. And, um, but also there was the, he was like, oh, and by the way, like, I'm going to get another singer. Like, you're not going to sing these songs. Like you'll help me write them. And then I'm going to record them. And it's a whole process. And I was like, okay, yeah. Like I have no idea how it goes, but I was realizing like, I really like writing music, I think. And I felt like so rusty compared to him. Like he was like so crazy on the drums and all instruments. And I was like, I could sing, but I hadn't been like training for the past like seven years and sure. feeling like technically, like I could see what I would want to do. And there were, and my, my, at the time, my, my taste was so weird. Like I was really into bass. I was really into this amazing band called, um, oh shoot, what is, what are they called? Their band is, um, oh, Lost in the Trees. They have an album called A Church to Fit Our Knees. Do you know it? heard of it i don't think i i wouldn't be able to name a song it's so brilliant because it's like orchestral odd time but like with jazz chords it's just like so crazy so i'm listening to all this crazy stuff and so that's the kind of thing i'm wanting to do and i'm feeling like uh, technically like sometimes it's hard for me so so we parted ways he's like i'm gonna have someone else sing all these songs i'm like okay i go to new york and i was like well i want to be a musician i realize i don't want to do painting i feel like the gallery stuff is kind of like not for me I didn't really like going to the gallery and being like this is my art blah 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 mm -hmm. that kind of just bothered me uh -huh. um and yeah so I got to New York and then I like there were the there was like a music conservatory the Brooklyn Conservatory so I like interned there and then got like all these free classes and then I decided nice. like I'm gonna um I'm gonna audition for CalArts and I want to go to CalArts. And so I like hook up with an opera teacher and um, just start training and, and trying to work on my audition because the audition's like seven classical pieces in four different languages. And then like one composition of your choice, but they're all these crazy opera pieces. And so I started training with her and then um, I flew out to LA for my first time ever coming to LA and I, um, I got in, well, I did my audition and, and they're like, you're obviously not an opera singer, but I did this crazy piece too with the loop station where I was just like talking about how like I had come there to just find a man and be married because like, that's the role of the female. And I was like, you think it was a crazy thing? And they were like, after that, they were like, oh, okay, like uh, you're in. And I was like, really? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, wow. I was really not expecting that. So I was like, oh, okay, yeah, thanks. And but I'm kind of like, believe it when I see it. Uh -huh. So I get back to um, New York and then, yeah, I, I got the acceptance letter. And then Louis was like, hey, you know, I feel like things have changed so much for you. Do you want to join the band? Do you want to make a band together? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, I guess so. And then I um, declined CalArts. Wow, that's, that's quite a story. That's cool. And uh, so you just, you just, you were like, I got in, but. I don't need to now because I'm just going to be in a band. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was thinking like, I feel like I'll learn a lot doing a band. Sure. And especially from someone who's been doing it for full time, full time for like just being in that environment. Um, yeah. Some That real world experience uh, can be a lot more valuable than school sometimes. Yeah. I, um, I majored in... Uh, uh, music was my major in college, but I I have to say most of what I learned, most of what I use as a musician today, I learned outside of college. Uh, and and one was at a was an at, at an internship. Like most of my production, um, yeah, I would say a lot of my production skills comes from my internship. You know what I mean? And so you interned, which was cool, and uh, so you know yeah. the value in that. Um, so you I mean, I what's that? Where did you intern? It was a company called Foursquare. It was in San Diego and they did like corporate uh, media. Uh, so I was doing like music and sound design with them. Um, so it was oh. really cool. Yeah, I, I learned all these tricks that I had never known. So that was cool. And uh, and then just like, and then tinkering around myself, you know, I, I was realizing I wasn't learning much as far as production goes. You know, I, I learned some music theory, which is cool. Um, I still uh, use that today. Yeah. But uh, so you guys, so is that the birth then right there of, uh, of your project, Holy Child? 
Yeah, it was. That was when we started. Like, I remember we were in DC and like Louis was close friends with Young the Giant because they are from California and they had toured together like his high school band and Young the Giant and um, they were playing 930 Club. <clears throat> and we had just been like recording that day. And then Eric, the guitarist came and was like, came to the studio before the show and was like, I really like this. And he's like laying down some guitar. And, and then I was like, well, cool. And then like, we go to the show and we're all backstage and everyone's like, this is the lead singer of Holy Child. And I was like, am I? Is that my life right now? It's crazy. Uh -huh. And I'm like, yeah, hi, nice to meet you. And it just felt so weird and cool. And I was like, this is crazy. And um, yeah, so we like recorded a, a batch of songs, shot a music video in New York, and then moved to LA to get it mastered um, and to release it. And then when we got to LA, we were like, we have to release this music video and we have to like come up with a way to make a splash. So um, we invited like, 200 people. I didn't know one person in LA. Like the only person I knew was the guy who, like the professors I met at Cal Arts. <laughs> uh -huh. And that's, those are the people actually who I connected with. Like the first time I got to LA, I was like, Hey, I know that I'm not out here um, with Cal Arts, but actually I moved here and um, like, let's take, I took lessons with them and like still studied with them. That's, that's so, that's such an awesome idea. Like it, it's like, it's like you just curated <laughs> your learning. You know, you're like, I'm not gonna pay tuition here, but how about I just take a little bit of, can you just give me a private lesson here and a little bit of, I mean, that's that's smart. Yeah, I know, We because in the, in the process of, I mean, in the process of applying, I kind of did like become a little bit close with them. I think that's why by the time I did the audition, they were like, you're in because, right. but I also wasn't sure if I, I you know, grad school is different. So I was like, do I want to go here? So when I'm talking to them on the phone, I was like, this is what I want to do. Is that possible? And I think they were like, oh, okay. You know, undergrad was so crazy. You're going in, you're like, totally different mindset. Yeah. Yeah. You, like, I think you, take me. <laughs> yeah. You're a lot more clear and, and you can be, you know, you know what to expect from, you know, graduate school or, you know, po yeah. post high school type school. Yeah. After you get a graduate degree. Yeah. So yeah, we um, we released this music video and we invited all these people to my house and we had like a big screening. And then that was kind of like the start of it. This like manager who managed one of the Black Eyed Peas was like, I wanna manage you. And then like, we're in LA for a month and he's like wine and dining us at La Poubelle. And I was like, I made it. Like Yeah, Hollywood baby. <laughs> so I was like, yeah. And like, it, it took a little while to kind of like, I mean, we stopped working with him soon after and blah, blah, blah. And everything was crazy. But um, yeah, it, it was a fu funny time. Yeah, it's cool because I, I have seen some of uh, your, your Holy Child videos and they're super fun and cool. And uh, so you guys, it's cool be knowing that you come from, you know, a visual background um, and you're an artist. So you can tell that you're bringing those, that, that mindset, that skill set into your, your visuals. Um, and it's, it's cool. I love the, like some of your funky, fun, funny, uh, you know, um, what's provocative lyrics in some of, in some of those songs, where, where does that come from? I don't know. Like I'm a writer and I always wrote all the lyrics for Holy Child. And I also directed all of the videos um, and came up with all of those ideas and the lyrics. I think that I'm like very sarcastic and really drawn to like dark comedy <clears throat> just in general in my life. And I'm always like making jokes and making myself laugh. And I think I'm goofy. I don't know, but um, I don't know. Like it's it's definitely like it's that I think is just like something that's so me that like I don't try I was talking about this the other day like I don't with some early holy child music videos like they came across so funny and I love it but I wasn't even intending for that and and that was like my early voice as a director kind of coming out and I was like oh, that's like hilarious. And then I was like, oh, I didn't even really realize. And then I'm like, I love it and kind of going with it. And I think that it also comes from like my love for absurdism. Cause like absurdism is inherently like kind of ridiculous and funny in a way. Um, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that 
I, I love that stuff too. I mean, it sounds like you were already on that path even before Holy Child with your application to uh, Cal Arts with your whole, I'm the woman and I belong in, you know, the kitchen and having a family and all that, that kind of tongue in cheek humor, um, sarcastic yeah. kind of thing you were doing there. Yeah, totally. So obviously you had some great success with Holy Child, um, made a splash, um, made it onto my playlists and I've been enjoying you guys, <laughs> but uh, you've recently started a solo project, Revenge Wife, um, and you dropped a couple new singles, Manifest and Earthquake. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that and, and what you have, uh, what you have plans next for Revenge Wife? Yeah, <clears throat> I'm really excited about Revenge Wife. It's like my solo project and that is new for me and I don't know it's so empowering like I really like I I you know coming out coming from holy child like I started it being like I don't know how to make music but I know I want to so like how can I get to a place where I'm doing that and I was like really trying to train I was constantly training in holy child even like throughout up until like 2017, I was like constantly like learning, 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 learning. And I still am, but I felt so deficient. Like I need to like take and I need to learn and I need to like get better. And um, that is like a great way to be. But at the same time, like it didn't feel like I had any power. It was like, I was like doing things I don't know. I was like doing things and I didn't like recognize like the essence of me, like how I'm saying, like uh, how that comedy aspect or like the lyrics. I didn't like, I didn't feel like I was like, oh yeah, that's me. Like I'm proud of me. And yeah, so it's really empowering doing Revenge Wipe now because I'm like, damn, like those are my songs that I'm writing. And um, it's, I don't have to answer to anybody right now. And with Holy Child, like there became like so many people to answer to at a certain point, like the label and the a &R people, and then this person, and then this person, like there was just so many people around. And I was, I, when we made decisions, it was like this huge thing and decisions wouldn't be made for like two years. Like, you know how the industry is, they like dangle carrots. So they're like, oh my God, yeah, great idea. We're just gonna finish the demo and then we'll like, send it along to this person and then see what they say. And then we'll like make a decision in two months when that happens. And you're like, all right, cool, two months. I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do. And then that doesn't work like that. Then two months comes around, the person's out of town. You're like, yeah. it's just, it just, and then so much time passes and you're like, what is happening? Right, that's so frustrating as an artist, especially because uh, two years from now, you might not even feel like how you felt when you made that track and it might not feel like you anymore. Totally. Yeah. So I just was feeling like I really want to be focusing on myself and writing. And yeah, I, I feel like, I mean, I'm loving Revenge Wife. Like I have an album done, Background Songs for Your Boring Life. So part one, the EP is going to come out um, in June and the next single will come out in May. And all of the music videos are sequential forever for mm -hmm. Revenge Wife. Okay. So like, um, Earthquake is part one, Manifest is part two. Uh, the next music video is the prologue um okay. and then after that it'll be like part three part four part five like so that in like three years i have like 20 music videos out and they all are a story wow yeah and i'm like so excited by that i'm working on yeah. the one that i'm doing and it, it's getting crazy like it's like fantasy horror absurdism like <laughs> i love that i love like thinking big picture long term like that <laughs> like uh I just you know you're seeing it in some of like the movies nowadays you know like Disney will spend like 10 years building up to a a climax for for their movie universes you know what I mean and it's yeah. like and then it just seems so epic once you get to that final conclusion like so maybe Revenge Wife will have that epic climax you know five years from now or whatever it yeah. might maybe I definitely feel lucky like I have the ability to make that commitment now from the beginning with all of the music videos which like I wouldn't have you it's hard to do if you're just starting out because you're like I just starting and then you're like I guess I should do a music video and then you do it and then you do the next one it's it's a little trickier yeah 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, I think that's how a lot of artists operate, which is cool too. You know, it's just like, I made this track and I'll make a video for it and then I'll see what happens, you know, and I'll just kind of go with the flow. So Elizabeth, you've had, uh, we're excited to see where you go with Revenge Wife. Sounds like you got big plans. Um, and you've done some big things with Holy Child already. Um, so it sounds like, uh, actually, before I, before I move on, I, I did want to just ask you about, uh, cause I, you, I read a great quote uh, from you about Revenge Wife, which was that you admit to this music being cringe honest, <laughs> which I think is is something I think a lot of artists can relate with. Um, you know, a lot of times when you're making something and you're being honest, you're like, is this cringe? You know, like, is like, do I even want to say this? Do I want to reveal this? Do, is this so cheesy of me or, you know, uh, so... Tell us about that um, and how you feel about that and um, and how you get past caring about that. Yeah, I think cringe honest to me is that feeling when you're like in the car with your friend and you're like, listen to this song I just made. And then they're like, okay. And then you're listening to it and that one lyric, like that line comes on. You're like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, now they know everything about me. Like, uh -huh. uh, it's just so revealing. <laughs> but so so yeah. for you, it's it's not so much that it's, oh, it's like cheesy or corny, but it's like, it's more that it's like, I'm really being honest and like, I'm afraid to reveal this about myself. Yeah, totally. It's, it, it's like that. Like I have that in, I have that in so many songs. It's been like that for a long time. Like the Holy Child wishing you away, bathroom bitch. There's like some moments in that where I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe I wrote that. And then like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, wishing you away. I don't know if I just said that one. Carmelo. Um, yeah, there are a lot of lines that that will come up. But yeah, I think that's, I don't know, like, I feel like, I feel like for me, my experience over the past, like, eight or nine years doing this, and in my life, like, anytime I'm like, nervous, and then I'm like, uh, just be honest. And then I say what I feel, even if it, it feels really vulnerable and scary, like, I'm always met with like receptiveness from that honesty. Right, right. Yeah, I've heard that from from a few people where it's like <clears throat> sometimes you think the the more honest or specific you get, the more you may alienate your audience, but it tends to have the opposite effect where you actually strengthen a bond with an with an audience cuz even if it's not exactly what they're thinking, they it may relate to your honesty or just the quirkiness of your individuality. Yeah. So I, as I was about to say, it sounds like you've had some, you know, great success with Holy Child, of course, and you're well on your way with uh, with Revenge Wife. So I feel like you would uh, be a great person to ask this. And we, we like to end our interviews by asking if you had one piece of advice to offer aspiring artists, what would it be? Okay. Hmm. If I had one piece of advice to offer aspiring artists, it would be to not neglect the importance of your connection with yourself um, in your art. I think that's, that's great advice. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I feel like it's such a great feeling when you <clears throat> create something that not only feels good and sounds good, but you're like, this really feels like me too. Yeah. And I think that that's something like, I never went to music school. I mean, like I did all that Brooklyn conservatory stuff and maybe you can speak on this, but like, I think that's something that lacks in like technical schools, to, especially to make music because there are so much, there's so much technically you can focus on, like literally theory is like, you know, and focus and song structure and what is this and technically how to play this. and. I wonder like how it would be, cause people are always asking me like, how can I write lyrics? How can I, how do you write lyrics? How can I do that more? How can I, and I'm like, literally just like be one with yourself. Like that's it. Like you, I don't know. I think that's, that's the way. And I wonder how it would be if like, I don't know. Do you feel like your music school, what kind of touched on that or? I don't know. Let's, uh probably you know it was a while ago and i've i've forgotten some of what i you know for what you're specifically talking about uh and the shout out to my high school 
creative writing teacher. I think she actually inspired me more as far as being creative in my writing. Um, I, I feel like I, I, I still have like a binder from some stuff that I wrote in high school that I'll like go and look for like little nuggets every now and then and they'll wind up in like songs. Um, so I would, I, and I heard some great advice uh, from, from Haim uh, that they got from um, um, Fleetwood Mac which was, uh, you know, two Love great it. artists right yeah. there. Yeah. And she was like, for writing, it's like, she was like, have a diary, just write what you do every day. And then like, have, so that's like the literal of what you did. And then like on the other side of the page, like poeticize it. And mm -hmm. uh, so I thought that was a really cool piece of advice. I haven't in, in, uh, applied that yet, but I think it's a really cool piece of advice for people who are just looking to um, write more. Personally, I have fun just, you know, I, I grew up listening to rock, rap, all that stuff. So I have fun with just wordplay or like finding like, you know, things that like clever things that you can do with words. So that's fun to me. Yeah. Um, so that type of thing. But going back to what you said about finding, you know, yourself in what you're writing, uh, I, I think it also relates to what you said about uh, every time you've kind of decided to be honest, it's worked to your favor. And I, I think that's, I, I think it reminds me of, you know, I'd rather be disliked for who I really am than, you know, how, how bad would it be if people didn't like you and you were trying to be somebody else? It's like, you know what I mean? I always think about that. If I'm, if I was being fake and people still didn't like me, like that would be said, then it would be like, but that's not even me. But so, yeah, so it's, 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 it's better to just, you know, go with, like you said, go with what you, what you believe in and what feels like you and, and then you'll find your audience and some people won't like it, but at least the people who do like you will be the, the right ones. Yeah, I think so too. It's like, you know, we're in a place right now where I think our culture is craving truth. Totally. <laughs> in, in so many ways, like, but even in like, it, it, we're at a place like even actors, like we want to know that that actor, if they're portraying something is like kind of honest in that way in their own life. And that's a new thing. And like, I wonder, I, I think that that trend specifically won't last forever. Like, you know, in the past that was like great acting is like, yeah. if they're not that, then they can play that. That's great. Right, right, right. now, like you better fucking be that way. Right. Right. And right. it's, it's kind of interesting, like that our culture is just so truth based right now um, in certain ways. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a uh, whole other topic. That's that's very interesting. And I and I get both sides of that argument because I love seeing a great actor do something that is complete opposite of what they really are. Um, but on the other hand, I, I get it when when someone's like, hey, you know, this this group barely is in films. So why not have them play the person that, you know, that, that you're trying to represent in this film. So uh, I, I think you're right. I think, I think once that's balanced out more then people will be more inclined to go back to, it's just great acting, you know? Yeah, totally. I know it's really not balanced right now. And it's amazing. Like this, this push toward like inclusivity like all across the board and 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 honesty too like not only in terms of the actors but like in terms of the artists and what they are like you know I mean talking about the Ariel Pink thing I mean we all were like what the heck like that was crazy like <laughs> I feel like his music is so progressive like how did that go there like I was thinking like man I can't imagine like all these Trump supporters listening to Ariel Pink like that just seems crazy to me <laughs> like, I love that that, image, I guess like it's just so different from the way that I felt because like music I feel like right now it, everything is so identity based like so like it's like I listen to this music and you can kind of guess my politics based on what I'm listening to right right yeah I think that's I think that I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of people who you can guess and then there's a lot of people you can't guess and then then I think I think there's outliers and and just you know very unique people like uh, <laughs> like Ariel Pink I think you know he he was like an interesting like kind of mysterious dude to begin with so maybe you know <laughs> maybe that just may, maybe that was the ultimate you know twist that he could pull at the end there but I I have a feeling that there weren't a whole lot of people you know 
listening to him. I think I think the when he he became like kind of outspoken about things, he probably gained some fans on, no, on that I side of the fence. You know, these, like older conservative. I know. Oh, being, like Ariel yeah. Pink, and then putting oh, yeah. being like, "What the heck?" Like, well, sa- same with Kanye West, probably, and that you know, but. I think I think the I think the two parties aren't as monolithic as you know we all make them out to be. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I think that's that's one thing. <laughs> yeah, I do think like right now there's a trend away from extremism, like amongst a lot of people that I'm. I mean, like it just got so extreme for a second. Yeah, it was a, it was a it was a gnarly year last year election year pandemic uh you know racial protests uh all that stuff so it was it was piping hot um so hopefully things cool down a little bit (laughs) you know